In today's video, I want to look at this failed GU10 LED bulb. Um, it's out of my kitchen. It's been in there a few years. Um, but as with so many of these cheap LED lamps these days, they're supposed to last forever, but they just fail. And um, we're going to have a look to see if we can repair it, what the cause of failure was, and possibly if we can improve something so that it doesn't fail so quickly. Maybe you reduce the current to the LEDs a bit, big Clive style. And um, uh, the brightness won't drop that much because you're only reducing the current a little bit because they're actually less efficient when they drive them this hard. And I think it's actually on purpose to make them fail. They're cheap enough to replace. This one was merely one pound, but you don't want it to go into landfill. And um, in theory, they should still last a long time. It's just um, maybe something in the design. Maybe they're just driving the LEDs too hard. So let's see what's, what's wrong with it for a start. So I think first thing we need to do is we need to plug it in and see if it lights up because this used to light up intermittently. Um, so that could just be a loose connection. So at the moment it's not working. We could tap it a bit to see if it starts working. Now normally you can see on these LEDs in the front if one of them starts to darken, sometimes under thermal stress it'll flash or come on and off. And they're all connected in series in these cheap bulbs. Um, so normally you can see one LED is darkened. I can't see without the cover off that it's darkened. But at the moment it doesn't want to light. So I think what we need to do is um, open it up and have a look. This lens in the front is just simply glued on so we can should be easily be able to pry it off. There we go. So from the looks of this um, LED bulb, these LEDs, they look fairly good. I can see a little bit of a, a mark on uh, this LED. So that one might be dodgy. I might be able to link that one out. It could just be aged stress because they really drive them hard. But... Um, we can test them individually, so we might do that. But let's uh, let's go deeper. Let's unscrew, let's unscrew this little PCB, and uh, see what we find underneath. If anything else looks a bit odd, there's a few failure modes for these LEDs. Sometimes it's not worth repairing, but very often it's it's a simple fix, and it's you know the, it's easy enough to repair. So why not repair them if you have the time? It's better than just throwing them away. Oh. That shouldn't happen. These are normally crimped in. If you look at these little dimples there. They're normally crimped in there. So that, that wasn't right. So let's look at the leads that go into those crimps. Let's have a look at them. Ah, oh, look. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but there's signs of arcing there. See the black line on the um, on the wire there? This is the fused resistor, fusible resistor, an inrush li limiting resistor. And this is the the wire that was crimped on, and it must have been a bad crimp, and it must have been arcing. That could explain the flashing. Now, that arcing could have damaged something else on the lamp, but um, what we could try and do is put some power directly onto there and see if the LEDs work. Right, let's apply some mains voltage there and see uh, if they light up. Right, so nothing. So that means something else has failed. So let's dive a bit deeper. Shall we start testing the LEDs? Let's have a look at that. So we know what probably caused the LEDs to stress a bit more than usual. I think it's the fact that it was arcing. Because of the nature of this capacitive dropper, there's an inrush with each arc, and that puts a lot of stress on these LEDs. Now to test these individual LEDs, um, we can use a current limited supply. Um, and in this case, I've just made a simple couple of 9 volt batteries clicked together in series and I've taken the battery clip and split it in half so I can put it on the end so you can adjust the voltage 
by just putting more or less batteries connected in series. The batteries themselves are also fairly current limited on their own. But what we'll do, we'll stick a resistor on this pair of tweezers and um, we'll limit the current to the resistor that way. This is my uh, little uh, test tweezers. In this case, I won't be using this to test anything. I'll just be using it as two insulated probes that I can now make contact on either side of the LED. So now we can carefully supply about 20 volts uh, to the LED either side. Um, now that might seem crazy high, but sometimes these LEDs are multi-chip LEDs, and so each, each LED consists of more than one LED connected in series, um, about three volts each. So let's have a look at this one. So this one's fine. And I think across it is about 16, 17 volts across it. So quite a few LEDs connected in series. So let's keep going around like that. So that one's okay. 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 And this one is dead as a dodo. So that one has sacri sacrificed himself for the rest by the looks of it. I think there's a little bit of a mark on the um, on the fluorescent gel in front of the LED. There's a telltale sign it went. I think the one next to it has a slight sign of failure as well, but it still works. So I'm going to take... Yeah, if I can make a good connection. So because all of these are connected in series, if that one goes open circuit, um, they all die. So we can just uh, link that one out. Um, and then they should all light up. So let's, let's give that a try. Now it's hard to unsolder these because this is aluminium backed circuit board. So we need to get quite a bit of heat on there. So I think it might be easier if we just crush it to, and then link across it with a bit of wire. So if I crush that with something like a pair of psychos. Right, so that's off now. That's the dead LED. So let's flux it up a bit. And then we can see if we can solder across that. It might be difficult because it's uh, it takes quite a heat a lot of heat out of from your soldering iron if you try and solder that. But it looks okay. Yeah, that's not too hard. So we put a little blob across there. That short circuiting out where the LED used to be. So let's see if it now lights up. Contact. So there we go. Excuse the brightness of the LEDs. So that was an easy fix, but we want to try and prevent it from failing again. So I think what we need to do is lower the current of the LEDs to give them a bit longer life. So if we change this limiting capacitor, this cap dropper, um, to a different value, we can keep the brightness a little bit dimmer, hardly noticeable, but increase the life drastically to this LED. So let's give that a try. Let's unsolder that cap. So it's 0.476 microfarad. So that's 470 nanofarad. So if we drop that to um, a little bit less, a lower value, I'll go from my capacitor bin and see what I've got. So this is the original capacitor. And it's a 470 nanofarad. So we can either lower it to uh, 330 nanofarad or 220 nanofarad. I'm tempted to go straight to the 220, pretty much half of the value. And that should make the LED last a lot, lot longer, the LED bulb. So let's try and put that in there. If it goes in. And hopefully it will still fit in the bulb because it's slightly longer than this one. But it's a handy little test anyway. So let's solder that on. Let's just solder that in place. 
So I think it's going to work just fine and be pretty bright at the same time. So let's uh, let's hook some power up to that. Let's see what the brightness looks like. So I think that's still bright enough. Considering the whole kitchen has got them in there. Um, and I don't think you'd notice anything if we, even if we put the diffuser over the top, I think that'll be just fine. So let's put it together and I would then possibly call that a LED bulb fixed and it's longevity increased. Not only do we not have to buy a replacement bulb, but we don't have to bother replacing it as often. Because that's what they want you to do. I wonder if we can solder those, if they could take solder. If I should give that a file or something, what is that covered with? Got a feeling it's brass, so we could just maybe solder the ends. We'll see if it takes solder, otherwise, we'll try and recrimp it. Right, that seemed to have gone in nicely. So they are poking out the end. Let's see if we can flood that with solder. There's a lot of heat to sink there, but. Uh, Maybe if we put a bit of flux on that, just to motivate things. The problem is, it's heating up the plastic, so hopefully it won't melt the plastic. All right. So, let's put the little screws in the front. Okay, I think that's one repaired LED lamp. Let's test it again. <clears throat> Here we go. So one LED is linked up, and I'm sure you'll hardly notice. So, one less thing to go into landfill. So the only thing left to do is a drop of uh, glue along the edge to make sure that diffuser lens doesn't fall out because I think the original glue is not holding anymore. So let's take the cover back off. You can use anything really but a contact glue I suppose is better because it's flexible. I think the super glue is just fine. So yeah, that's normally what happens is one of these LEDs inside fell. But uh, I think in this particular case, it was accelerated by the arcing. And that causes like inrush current to pass through the capacitive dropper. And um, puts a lot of stress on these LEDs. Sometimes it's just a dry solder joint. In this case, it was a combination of two things. Uh, a bad crimp in there causing stress on the on the LED making it fail but they do that on their own because they they're driven way too hard and it seems to be a common problem even with some of the more expensive LED bulbs they don't want them to last forever you guys might want to have a look to see if you could fix one of these things they they might not be worth fixing for you just throw them in the bin but um, my motto is why throw in the bin if it can be fixed and it's a lot of fun. It's interesting to see how they work and what actually failed on them. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like these kind of videos, um, please subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you like the videos and you want you see your friends to see them, then um, share it with them. It, it motivates me to make these kind of videos. They're a lot of work to edit and prepare. And um, the more people I can share it with, the, the better it makes me feel about making them. So 
And we all like to help each other out. We all want to learn things and teach each other different things. And this is what I discovered with this LED bulb. So um, maybe you can tell somebody else about it. So uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment and uh, share if you can or if you want to.